What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is a little bit different because we're talking about an outboard conversion and that's the outboard conversion that we did on the 79 Wellcraft. We've had a lot of guys in the comments asking us what we did, who did the job. We actually did it ourselves. Have a ton of pictures I'll share with you guys and some videos. We're going to roll that for you guys. At the end of the video, we're going to talk about all the performance gains and you know how we feel about the outboard conversion and uh, you know if there's any cons or anything like that. So stay tuned to the end of the video for that. But right now, we're gonna get into the outboard conversion. So it's kind of crazy that we're doing this this time of year because it's the middle of summer when the fishing season's really good, but there's some pretty bad weather this week and next week, so we're gonna try and get this thing done as fast as possible. Not do a bad job, do a good job in a short amount of time. So the inboard was an old 350. It used to go right here. We got that out of the boat. We're going to build these stringers up to the transom, get the old transom out, put a couple supports in this thing so that way it can hold the outboard on the back of it. So we were hoping we weren't going to have to go all the way through, but it looks like we're going to. This thing is just smoked. Yeah, so we're going to have to cut a little bit more out of the boat than we're anticipating, probably rip this edge up here, get this thing out of here so that way we can get that big motor on the back. Oh, it's wasted super soft note to self if you have a boat don't just drill a bunch of holes in the transom we didn't do that previous people did that they didn't have silicone on any of the bolts they didn't have any sealant look at that just falling apart all right you guys so we looked at this transom i don't know probably what like a week ago yeah we were doing some miscellaneous motor work and we're like oh man that transom shot because we noticed that it was loose in the fiberglass but I mean, it is really shot. It's crazy to think that we were even out here, bluefin tuna, and it just rotted like that. 50 miles off, no problem. Rotted transit, no biggie. But you never really know until you open that thing up. Yeah. Once you start cutting fiberglass, you really can tell. Because even when you're hitting it, it still felt super, super solid. But... And you guys can see right here, the wood up here is pretty solid. But down here in the bottom, it's all rotted out around the the ring here so when you knock it from the outside it feels good but would have never really known that it was this rotten like this we just noticed that there was a little bit of flex in this side at the bottom i don't know if we picked the right day to do this but it is what it is because we got to get this done so we get back on the water but it is super super hot me and devin are dying but we got the transom gutted out of this thing we had to cut into the floor we're going to have to patch that back up once we're done here. But we're just trying to get the remaining of the wood out here so we can clean this up. We're down to glass over here and a couple more spots. So basically what we did is we used a cutoff wheel to cut the fiberglass out of this thing. And this is, you can see here, it's probably actually hard to tell. This is where the original transom is. The transom was really rotted from the lower half down. You can kind of see how the upper is pretty stuck here to the transom. That part was actually in decent shape. We're going to keep gutting this thing out, get all sanded down smooth, and then build our transom pieces. It's been a day. I don't know. It's probably like 95 degrees today. We were just sweating all day long, but we got the back of the transom completely out here, and we were working on it. We decided to check the stringers. Someone had redone this side stringer here, and uh, they put in, uh, what was it, two 2x6s? Two 2x12s. Two the two 2x12s. Two Another side had a 4x4, four four, totally rotted out. So we're still finishing up this here. We're going to grind this all smooth, get all of our edges smooth, take some measurements tonight, so that way we can start doing some glass work and get some wood cut. But, man, that was a lot of work. It's a good thing that we checked out the boat. Make sure you guys, if you have an older boat that has fiberglass um, and wood to make sure you guys check your stringers, check your transom so that way you guys don't lose a motor or drown out there if you're in the ocean. Check all this out out here. Pure rot. All that came out of the boat. Got fiberglass dust everywhere. Probably should be wearing more clothes than we are, but it's so hot today and we're kind of on a limited timeline. Try and get this thing done in about two, two and a half weeks. I don't recommend trying to do this project on a timeline, but Devin and I, we've had some experience doing this kind of stuff in the past before, so we're gonna keep rolling on. So we didn't film the rest of this project, but we did take a lot of pictures and we wanted to show some of those to you guys and basically our approach and how we took care of this whole job. It was a monster. We worked every night till about two in the morning after we got off work. It was brutal, but all worth it in the end. 
So the first thing we did is we cut two pieces of marine ply, made sure they fit nice and snug to the transom, and then we bought some Total Boat 2 to 1 epoxy and some West System 403 and 406. It's a fume silica. You mix it in with your epoxy to make a substance called peanut butter. It's very, very thick. It's very, very strong. Epoxy resin is much stronger than polyester resin. So what we did here is we made a bunch of peanut butter. We sandwiched it in between the first piece of plywood and the transom and then in between the first piece of wood and then the second piece of wood and we use this jack right here along with some dowels to put some pressure on the wood to make sure everything was nice and snug. If you guys are interested in doing this kind of work to your own boat, I highly suggest checking out Boatworks today. They taught us a ton of stuff. We watched a lot of videos before doing this project. That way we felt confident enough in the work that we were going to do. Plus we had some prior fiberglass experience, but we learned a lot. There's a lot to learn from that channel and they have a lot of really great tutorial videos. The next step we took is we put our third piece of marine ply and our stringers into place, of course, after those other pieces had dried. And what we did is we made another peanut butter, but we made it out of polyester this time. So what we did here is we used polyester resin along with some fume silica, and then we also used actually a polyester structural putty to fill all these gaps here and to sandwich down the stringer into place and then put this third piece of marine ply. We also filled the large gap in the top of the wood here, which you can see with some polyester structural compound. After we got that done, we pre-cut all of our pieces of fiberglass. That way it's going to be really easy to lay all of our resin into place. The material that we used was a 1708 mat. It's really strong. I can't explain the specifics of why it's really strong, but it's what everyone uses when they're doing these kinds of projects, especially on a transom, and it lays down really nice. We were really happy with how that turned out. So what we did is we put three layers of tabs around the transom and then we put three full sheets of fiberglass over those tabs to lock those things in place and then we put some gel coat with some wax to seal that thing off for the next day. Anytime you guys are working with polyester resin, you're going to want to use a laminating resin. When you're going to finish any of that work, you're going to want to make sure you're putting a surfacing agent like a wax or a gel coat to make sure you finish your, your resin, otherwise it is not going to cure. So that's why we put gel coat, and gel coat's nice because it does have a bit of a filling effect, which makes it a little bit easier to sand because we have a lot more layers to go after this. One thing I highly recommend is buying this bottle. It made mine and Devin's job a lot easier. It's a mixing bottle for all your resin, especially if you're gonna be working in large batches. It worked really great for this entire job. I'm gonna sound like I'm repeating myself, but it is so important that you guys make sure you do your research before using all these chemicals. Number one, they're not good for your body to breathe in. Number two, if you're working in temperatures, the chemicals are gonna react differently. Right here, we're actually using a bucket of ice to keep our resin nice and cool because we're working with really hot temperatures and we're having things harden right away. Make sure you guys do your research and your planning before just jumping into this kind of job. So we sanded down all of the gel coat to prepare it for the next steps of this project. We cut out some supports or keels or whatever you want to call them to put some support to this transom because we we're going to hang that big motor off the back. So you can see what we built here. This is a couple pieces of three quarter ply that we butted up together and we put some we put some peanut butter in between these and we let these dry before we started glassing them to the boat. So we continued to fiberglass here. What we did is we put three more tabs all the way around this thing along with two more sheets. Plus we put three sheets all over the stringers. We put more tabs along the keels. It was a ton of fiberglass work. We gel coated it all. We sanded it down. Then we built some battery tray boxes that we glassed in with more of that 1708. Gel coated those and we painted everything with Total Boat epoxy bilge paint. It turned out really nice once that was done. So the back of the boat, we had to strip everything down. We took the kicker off, we took the trim tabs off, we took everything off the back of the boat. We cut a quarter inch piece of marine ply to fill the back of the transom hole there. Some parts of the transom were quarter inch thick of fiberglass, some parts were half an inch thick of fiberglass. So we did have to use some fiberglass to fill those gaps. And then we ended up fiberglassing over the entire thing. We fiberglassed over all of the holes, sanded everything down smooth. We did a couple layers of total boat 
fairing compound to smooth everything out. We painted the back of the boat with some gel coat. We used a pigment shift to get it the best we could to match the rest of the boat. And that pretty much concluded us, you know, finishing the back of the boat before we put the outboard on. Our good friend Charlie at Hicks Marine Fabrication fabricated this bracket for us. It turned out really nice. It was everything we wanted it to be. He did a really great job. If you guys need marine fabrication work, I highly recommend you give Hicks Marine Fabrication a call. Later that night, our good friend Nico, Devin, myself, we took his excavator to take the 250 off of my bass boat, move it over, and then set it down on the air slot. We took a Bob's Machine Shop 8-inch action jack plate and put it on the back of the outboard bracket. That way we can really dial in our height when we're out there on the water. So at this point, it already had been a lot of work for Devin and I, probably more work than we estimated and, you know, the work just continued to be more and more at that point because at this point we got rid of the old cable steering. We switched to hydraulic, which means we had to put a new helm in the boat. We had to run the wiring harness. There was a bunch of things that we gutted out. We basically were starting over. We got the batteries all mounted up. We put brand new battery cables in this thing. Basically everything under the floor of this boat was pretty much new. New bilge pump, new bilge pump hoses, new fuel lines, new trim tab lines, all the wiring going up to the helm was new. We had new throttle cables, new hydraulic steering cables. We basically went through everything in this boat to make sure everything was nice and sound. So at this point, Devin and I were chomping at the bit to take this thing out on the water. And that is exactly what we did. We took it to a local ramp where we were able to put this thing out in the water, topped out, you know, around 40 miles an hour or so. We didn't even have the floor in it just because we were trying to test everything out, but the boat handled great, performed great, steered great. We eventually switched to a four blade prop, which I'll talk about that later in the video. We hadn't put the kicker motor on it yet. We hadn't put the trim tabs on it yet. We hadn't put the transducer for the graph back on it yet. So we had to do all those things. And then we had to get started on the floor. We ended up deciding to glass over the fish wells and then we built a big platform on the back of the boat that was three quarter inches higher than the stock floor and we did that on purpose because we built some nice floor drains in the back of the boat so if we catch a fish and there's blood everywhere we can just spray it at the back corners of the boat and all that water falls into the drains which goes right to the bottom of the boat rather than you know being on the floor everywhere and you know when we took the boat out over the weekend it actually performed really well the drains worked great exactly like we wanted them to so for the floor pieces of the boat on the back side where you can't see them, we actually use fiberglass cloth. It soaks up a lot less resin. It's a lot easier to work with. We glassed all the bottom sides of the pieces, laid everything down in the boat, sanded the whole floor of the boat down. We glassed everything on the top side with more of that 1708, lots and lots and lots of fiberglass on this job. We sanded everything back down and we put a gray tough coat on the boat and it turned out super, super sweet. So you guys right now, we are just chilling in the boat. We are waiting to pick up some crab pots. But one of the things that we were most happy about in the boat was getting rid of that big dog house that was back there, that old 350. We got all kinds of fishing space. There's tons of room. So that's definitely one of the things that we enjoyed most about the project and one of the benefits we got out of the boat. So a couple more pros that we really do like about switching it to the outboard. We have a lot more speed. We're definitely more fuel efficient. We definitely get on plane quicker and big swell. And the noise, the noise was a big thing for us. So it's nice having the engine all the way off the back of the boat, because when we're in the front of the cabin and we're headed out and we're looking for birds and stuff, we can actually talk to each other with like a normal, a normal voice level. And we're not screaming three feet away from each other, which is really, really nice. Overall, we were really happy with how this project turned out. We get on plane so fast and what we actually did is we ended up switching to a four blade prop we ended up getting it from the guys up in washington called the prop shop they were super helpful in us dialing in our prop and i mean we got on a plane super quick the boat tops out at probably 45 ish miles an hour right now with the prop that's on there way more than what we need hope you guys like this video if you have any questions please leave a comment below if you've not subscribed to the channel already please do so Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.